The vast majority of pilots in FPV are using a radio that runs the OpenTX operating system, and that is a problem. Yep, as big of a fan as I am of OpenTX, I am fed up with their slow pace of development. Now I know, OpenTX project is open source and the devs work for free in their spare time so they don't owe us anything. I acknowledge all of that. But it has been, hold on, uh, OpenTX 2.3.0. It has been over two years since OpenTX 2.3.0 was released and there are a bunch of really desirable features that were promised that they're coming just as soon as OpenTX 2.4 comes out and they haven't come and it doesn't seem like they're ever gonna come and I don't know why and I don't care because EdgeTX is delivering today. EdgeTX is a fork of OpenTX basically started by some developers who were like, hey, if you guys aren't going to work on this, can we take over? More or less. And they have delivered on so many of the things that we've been wanting from OpenTX 2.4 and more. Touchscreen support for the RadioMaster TX16S? Yes. 500 hertz gimbal polling? Yes. And a complete rework of both the internal and the user interface? Oh, yes. And today, HDX 2.5 is out, and we're going to go ahead and update this radio to HDX 2.5 and see what it's got, and you can come along with me if you so desire. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Now, the next thing I did when I recorded this video was walk you through the steps of installing HDX on a radio, but I think... I should actually like show you EdgeTX 2.5 and maybe help you decide if you, you want to go through that process before I make you sit through me going through the process. So here we are, it's Joshua from the future here, having installed EdgeTX on this radio. And the big thing that EdgeTX brings, at least to the RadioMaster TX16S, is touchscreen support. It's always had a touchscreen, just the software never supported it. So if we just tap here, we could select model. There you go. And here's all our models. Do we have... We don't have sliding support. Oh no, I only have that many models, so never mind. Uh, we could create categories for our models. If I want to have one category for fixed wings, one for multi rotors, one for cine lifters, I could have different categories. We don't really need that. I don't have that many models. Um, so we could pick a model. Ooh, Free Sky D16. I don't know why I would do that. Oh, I've just created a new model. Do we have sliding? Oh, we do! Yay, we have like full touchscreen support. What if I long tap? No, I don't want to do that here. Don't select model. Okay, thanks. Let's just go ahead. Long press, delete model. Oh my god, it's like using an actual touchscreen computer from the present. Not even from the future. Can I swipe here? I don't appear to be able to swipe here, but I can tap. So a lot of what we see in this radio is just OpenTX, but with kind of a new skin on it and touchscreen support. And that may be a compelling enough reason for you to uh, upgrade all by itself. Uh, EdgeTX also has theme support. Uh, this is something that's in development and is, is not final, but if we just hold down the page key here, or no, hold down the telemetry key here, we can see the ability to change themes. Let's just try some of these different themes. Let's concrete, green fields. Oh, yeah. Let's see. And there's in fact a theme library online that you can, oh, yeah, cute. There's a theme library online that you can check out if you wanna check out some of the other themes. Um, what about widgets? I know they've improved the widgets a lot. Another feature that EdgeTX added is the ability to make widgets full screen. So I've put this widget here and that's something I can do on OpenTX, but if I double tap the widget, the widget becomes full screen. And now instead of just seeing the first eight channels, I can see all 32 channels. Well, for the specific widget that may not really seem very compelling, but this is another one of those things that EdgeTX is giving to developers and letting them play with for the future. I mean, a widget here is kind of like an app. For example, imagine TBS Agent Lite. Instead of running as a Lua script, you just kind of have it as a widget on your screen. And maybe it shows some crossfire statistics or something. But then if you double tap it, boop, it goes full screen and is now you're configuring your crossfire system. It allows developers to extend 
the interface in a much more integrated and seamless way than just Lua scripts. Now, another thing that Edge TX has added to 2.5 is Companion, and that's a big deal if you use a computer, like I do, to back up and modify your models. Let's go ahead and download and install that and see what it's got uh, to offer. Th this is just OpenTX Companion adapted for Edge TX, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So it looks like this is OpenTX Companion, but without the ability to download new firmwares. For that, You'll have to do what I'm going to show you in just a second, show you how to download firmware and flash and update your radio. But it is nice that they filled the gap of the ability to like read your models off the radio, modify them on the computer if that's what you like to do. Or in my case, what I'll do is I'll back them up and save them and then have them to restore them if I ever need to move to a different radio or something. So it's nice that that's there. That was one of the last sort of hurdles to me thinking of Edge TX as sort of ready for prime time. Well, okay, if that has convinced you that you want to switch to HTX, here is Joshua from the past to show you how to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power my radio on. I'm going to get my USB cable and I'm going to plug it into my computer and I'm going to back up my radio. In case anything goes wrong, you just never freaking know. So we'll plug in, we'll go to USB storage and we'll start OpenTX Companion. And after the radio connects and the two USB drives pop up in, in Windows Explorer, then we're just going to do read, write, read models and settings from radio. If you haven't ever set up OpenTX Companion before, there's a couple steps you need to do the first time. I'll put a link in the video description to a tutorial about downloading OpenTX Companion and setting up your very first model if you need that. After we've done read models and settings from radio, I'm just going to do file, save as, and I have a folder I've created, OpenTX Backups, and I've got a folder in here, and we're just gonna save to, we'll name it Radio Master TX16S. There we go, fine. The other thing we need to do is back up the SD card contents, and we can do that with the synchronize SD card function. I'm gonna pick up my local folder which is I've made just a folder here on my drive to store the SD card contents. And the radio folder is going to be the USB drive. And we're going to, let's sync from source to destination and go. Yeah, you can also just take your freaking SD card out of your radio, put it into an SD card reader, and copy all the files off the SD card uh, to a folder on your computer. That's going to be much faster than doing this because the SD card reader is going to be way faster than the USB interface in your radio. The only reason to do this would be if you had previously been doing this and so you had a backup already on your hard drive, then this would only move over the changed files and maybe be a little faster. Mostly I'm just doing this because every time I don't use the synchronized SD SD function, people fill up the comments saying, why don't you do the synchronized SD function? It's so good. I don't really use this. I just take the SD card out of the radio and I copy the files. Now that we've backed up the models and settings and the SD card contents for our radio, we can go to this page, which is the Edge TX installation guide. And we will start by downloading and extracting the Edge TX SD card contents. Uh, and we're going to need to do that for whichever radio we have. Uh, we've got Horus NV14 for the Nirvana NV14, Tyrannus X7 for the QX7, Tyrannus X9 for the X9D. Back here on the installation guide, we can see which zip file we need. Uh, for my TX16S, the Jumper T16, any FreeSky Horus radios, and most other radios that have a color screen, such as the Jumper T18, we're going to use Horus.zip. For NV14, this is only the FlySky Nirvana NV14. The Tyrannus X7 zip is for all radios with 128 by 64 black and white screens, like the Jumper T Lite, the QX7, the X9 Lite, and so on. And then for those with a black and white widescreen, like the X9D, that's the Tyrannus X9 zip. Once I've downloaded the SD card contents, I am going to copy that contents over to the SD card on the radio. And because the radio's SD card reader is freaking slow as heck, I'm just gonna take it out of the radio and I'm gonna use an SD card reader on my computer, which is gonna be way faster. You can do it through USB on the radio if you need to. 
Now at this point, you're gonna delete everything off that SD card and copy the contents of the zip file over to the SD card, but there may be a few things you wanna retain. Most significantly, if you have a color screen radio, essentially if you're using the Horus.zip, or maybe the Nirvana, I'm not sure about that, your radio settings and your models are stored in the models and radio folders. And if you, want, if you don't wanna lose those when you go to Edge TX, you're gonna to wanna to save those folders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all, Control A, and then I'm gonna Control click models and radio to deselect them. At this point, if you have any custom sound files, any custom image files or anything like that, you would also deselect those or set those aside in another folder to, res to pre preserve them as you copy over. But I don't have any custom sounds or anything, so I'm just gonna delete these folders, leaving my models and radio behind. I also need to show you if you've got a black and white screen radio like this Tyrannus X9 Lite, a QX7, an X Lite, or anything like that, there's an additional step you need to do if you wanna save your models going forward. And that is, you're gonna press menu one time, and then here in the model select screen, you're gonna click the jog wheel, and you're gonna choose backup model. And that's gonna put a copy of that model in your models folder on your SD card. It doesn't keep them there normally like the color screen radios do. And you're gonna do that for each of the models that you wanna carry forward, backup model each time. Now that the SD card is cleared out, we're gonna take the contents of the zip file and we're gonna drag it over and copy it over to the SD card. And now we have our SD card ready for the HTX install. Next, we'll download our desired sound pack. We'll click this link here and I'm gonna choose the EN for English, this is a uh, China, Czech, German, English, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Russian, I believe. And here we are. There's our sounds folder. And we will just, oh yeah, okay. And we'll just drag and drop that over into our SD card. So the sounds folder is now populated with a subfolder EN, which has all the sound files in it. Next, we'll download the EdgeTX firmware for our radio. And we're gonna get that from GitHub and we'll scroll down to the releases and um, we will click on edgetxfirmware.zip. We'll open that up and there's gonna be a firmware in here for each of the different radios that EdgeTX supports. So we'll pick the firmware that starts with our radio name, T16. I'll bet that's the jumper T16. Yes, here it is, tx16s.bin. And we're gonna put that in the firmware folder on our SD card. Got it? Now finally it is time to put this SD card back in the radio. The next thing we're gonna do is power up the radio and it is gonna give us some error messages and complain about our SD card contents. Don't worry about that. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna long press the sys key and we're gonna page to the SD card. Uh, if your radio doesn't have a sys key, long press the menu key and then page to the SD card. We'll click to go into the firmware folder. We'll highlight that bin file, long press, and flash bootloader. And when that is done, we will power down the radio. Next, we're gonna boot the radio up in bootloader mode. And on most radios, the way you'll do that is hold the two trim switches inwards and power up. The exception to that is the uh, X-Lite, the FreeSky X-Lite, you hold the D-pad inward. Not down, but literally click the center of the D-pad. If it doesn't work, usually it means you've accidentally rolled your thumb one direction and you're actually pushing left, right, up, or down. Hold that down and power up and you will get the bootloader. And you'll see now we've got the Edge TX bootloader, which looks different if you've ever seen the Open TX bootloader. We're gonna choose right firmware. We're gonna choose that bin file. And we're gonna hold to uh, flash the firmware. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice here is that my widgets have not been preserved. Hold on, let me power up my OpenTX. Welcome to OpenTX. The advantage of having two radios. So you'll notice that right here, for example, I've got these widgets, I've got this readout here, and if I page, I've got another screen here with some telemetry sensors. And all of that has been lost going to Edge TX. Unfortunately, Edge TX, well, fortunately, Edge TX is revamping the whole themes and widgets functionality of OpenTX to be way, way more powerful. But what that means is that when you go from OpenTX to EdgeTX, you will lose your widgets. Um, but all of your model settings should be there. Everything should work exactly as it, as it was. 
Well, there you go. Now you know how to flash to HTX 2.5 and you've seen some of the uh, some of the things HTX 2.5 has to offer. But the big question you're probably wondering is, will I be switching my daily driver radio over to HTX 2.5? And I'm still not sure. What do you think? Is HTX still kind of rough around the edges and only for enthusiasts or is it ready to be your daily driver? I'll be watching down in the comments and I'd love to hear what you think. If you got value out of this video, can I let you know that I do have a Patreon? It's a way that you can support the work that I do here for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. It's totally up to you. I always help everybody for free in emails and messages all over the internet, but uh, it sure does mean a lot if you value the work enough to support it. So there's a link down in the video description to my Patreon page if that's something you're interested. If you're not sure, just keep watching content until you get there. I hope you will. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.